So at the beginning of this Google Analytics series, what did we do? We went ahead and we added the Google Analytics tracking code to our website. So I'm going to switch things up a little bit now and say, no, nope, that's not what we should have done. And we're going to start looking at Google Tag Manager. So let's find out how this works. So when we started off this series, we went straight into Google Analytics. We created an account and we got the the code for that property and we went ahead and added the tracking code onto our website. So this gave us the ability to be able to start tracking the visitors to our site right away. Now, what I want to look at in this video is Google Tag Manager. Now, the, the purpose of using Google Tag Manager, it's not that we necessarily should have started with this first of all, because you needed to kind of get straight into analytics and start to look at some of the things. But with Google Tag Manager, what we can do is we can essentially manage the code or manage things that we create all in one place. So for example, if we have a website that we're tracking, we add the tracking code for Google Analytics, that's great. We might then start using something like Click Dimensions if you use Dynamics 365, or we might use Dynamics 365 for marketing. Both of those have tracking code that you then add into your website so that you can then track in their various areas of functionality. If we're using all three for some reason, then we're going to have three lots of tracking code. And the more scripting and the more tracking code that we add to our site, it can sl potentially slow things down. It then gets a little bit messy. Then how do we find things? That kind of stuff. Also, you don't necessarily want to have to ask if you're not the one editing your own website, you don't want to have to ask somebody uh, every time you get new code or you want to, to add new stuff. So they call they they call these pieces of um, code or the things that you're tracking, we basically have them all called tags. So we're basically going and putting in new tags into Google Tag Manager rather than editing the website each time. So let's go ahead and get started. So you can see here to start free, we've also got sign into Tag Manager. So if you're already logged into your Google Analytics account, then it will take you straight into Tag Manager. But the first thing we need to do is create an account. So let's go ahead, we'll create an account. And again, just like with Google Tag Manager, we could call, sorry, just like with Google Analytics, we can call the account whatever we want um, and then have different containers instead of properties, we have different containers for this. So I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, MVW Consulting Limited and let's just go ahead and change the country. Um, and again, we have the option to share data with Google if we want to. We can check that. That's entirely up to you. So then we're basically setting up the container. So again, just like you have an account with, you can have multiple properties. We could have an account with multiple containers. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this in. And this is the target platform of the web. So I'm basically tracking web pages for desktop and mobile. I'm going to go ahead and click create and then we're going to get our sort of terms of service. We need to go through read and then accept and agree. So yes, I agree to that. So then we're going to have that account saved. And just like we did with Google Analytics, we then get the tracking code that we need to add to our website. So with this, we are going to go ahead and we're going to have two places that we need to put the code. The first one, is going to go, basically, the best thing is to put it right after that head tag within the code on our website. And again, as mentioned in previous videos, ideally, if you're using something like WordPress, or you're using some kind of content management system that has a head.php or a header file of some kind, you're just going to be putting it in there. Then we have a second piece of code, and we're going to put that after the opening body tag. Now, again, if you're using WordPress, then that body tag is likely going to have PHP within that tag as well. Um, but you're looking for where you've got body and it's fairly near to the top. So we're going to be putting those two pieces of code into the website. And that's what we're going to be using to tie this Google Tag Manager account to our website. Now, we're not going to remove the Google Analytics tag just yet or the, the tracking code just yet. We want to just go ahead add this, save it, and then we're going to do a couple of things within Tag Manager before we can then remove that code. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add this into the site so that I can then carry on to the next step and we can then see what we need to do to be able to make sure that our Google Analytics tracking is still going to be applied to our site. OK, so once we've added, let's go ahead and click OK. Now, you can see here that it says the container is not published. So we've added our tracking code and we can go ahead and publish it now. But first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new variable and the variable is going to be the Google Analytics variable. So what we need to do is we need to set up a variable that we can then pull from a tag and then we can go ahead and actually have that Google Analytics tracking code be applied to our website but via Google Tag Manager rather than having the code on the website directly. So it might sound a bit confusing but let's go ahead and jump in and hopefully it will make sense. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the menu on the left and click on variables and what we need to do is we need to add a new user-defined variable. So once we've done that, we need to go ahead and choose a variable type and we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're looking for a Google Analytics setting. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Now, once we've picked this, what we need to do is we need to get the tracking ID from our account. So if I go to into analytics and let's go ahead and we go to the um, admin area for that property and look at the tracking info go to the tracking code and there we have our tracking ID. So we're going to just go ahead and copy that, come back here and we're going to paste in the tracking ID. And that's all we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and click save. It will then go ahead and ask me to give the variable a name. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this Google Analytics ID and save it. So now we've got our user defined variable. So next what we want to do is add a tag and from that tag, we're going to have the, essentially the, the tracking code that Google, Analy Google Analytics uses. We're going to have the tracking code added into Tag Manager so that the Tag Manager code is going to pull the Google Analytics ID that we've put in there. So this will allow us to go ahead and put in Google Analytics universal tracking code in here. So I'm going to go ahead and click new for my tag. And the tag configuration, we'll see that there are options in here and we're going to do the Google Analytics Universal Analytics option. That's what we're going to be pick, picking and it's essentially a template that we are using. So what we're going to do is it's the tracking type is a page view. So in other words, we're tracking all of the page views that happen. And now in the Google Analytics settings, we'll see that this is basically the variable that we just set up. So if you tried to create your tag, first of all, without the variable, you wouldn't have anything in here as an option. So that's why we do the, um, the variable first so that we can then see it in the list. Now what we're going to do is we need to set, okay, well, when is this going to trigger? We want this to trigger on all pages. So this is one of the, um, the sort of the default triggers that, that comes into Google Tag Manager. So I'm going to go ahead and click on all pages. And again, I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to just call this Google Analytics tracking code. And we're going to go ahead and save this. Now, once we've added this, we are almost ready to actually go ahead and um, and check this out and see that it's working. So first I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and submit. And you're going to go ahead each time you submit, you need to give the version a name. So what is it that you're actually submitting? So I'm going to call this Google Analytics Tracking. If you've done multiple things, you can then go ahead and put in more um, details about that. So I'm just going to say added the Google Analytics um, ID and set the tracking code in there. Um, now this is going to be your sort of um, audit history, your audit trail, so to speak. This is really, really important, especially if you are uh, managing your Google Tag Manager area with multiple people. So if there's more than one of you responsible for a website, so I'm going to go ahead and click publish. So we can see that we um, now can see that 
version one, Google Analytics tracking. We've got the description. What did we do? We added a tag and we added a variable. So I'm going to go back to the workspace. Now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and check to make sure that this um, tag is being triggered on our website. So I'm going to go ahead and click preview. Now what this does is it puts Google Tag Manager into a sort of um, preview mode where we can preview the workspace and the workspace that we have here is for that um, container of meganvwalker.com. So I'm going to go ahead and open up another browser and go to the site. And once we're in preview mode, what you'll find is that there will be a section that will open at the, bo at the bottom and we can see the Tag Manager. And this is exactly what we're looking for. We want to see that the tag that's been fired is the Google Analytics tracking code. So that's exactly what I wanted to see. I know that when someone is now going to a website, it's going to fire that tracking code so that we're able to use it. So now we can go back into um, our uh, website and we can remove the original Google Analytics code because we no longer need that because the, the Google Analytics tracking is actually happening now through Tag Manager rather than the original code. Now let's say that we have something like I mentioned before, either Click Dimensions or we've got a Dynamics 365 marketing app. What we can do is we can go ahead and we can add in additional um, tags that will be used and triggered on all pages. So if we want to add another tag, if I go to the t either from here, the tags, or I can click here and add tags from here. And for this, what I want to do is I need to use some custom HTML. So I'm going to go ahead and set custom HTML. The tracking code that you get from either Click Dimensions or um, Dynamics Marketing or whatever it is that you're using that's another third party tool, you're going to go ahead and paste in the HTML there. And again, you're going to go ahead and set the triggering to, triggering to be on all pages. And then you're going to call it something like Dynamics Marketing, whatever it might be. Now, obviously, I haven't put any code in there, so it's not going to do anything. But you're, you're going to have to put ex the exact code that you get, paste it in there, and then do the same thing again where you are previewing and going and opening up that website to make sure that the tracking is um, being triggered. So those tags are being fired when you actually open up your website. So if you haven't already got Google Tag Manager, go ahead and set it up. And again, remember, walk through the steps where you set up your variable for Google Analytics. Then you go ahead and do your tag and use the variable and trigger in all pages. And at that point, then you can go ahead and remove your Google Analytics tracking code that you added originally so that you're not missing out on any of those visits if you remove it first. So go ahead and, and do that. And we will we'll look at Google Tag Manager in future episodes and we'll be adding more tags and, and figuring out really cool and exciting things that we can do with Tag Manager. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.